Today we are going to visit one of the oldest cemeteries in Wetzel County, West Virginia. Today we are going to talk about the William Cemetery of New Martinsville, West Virginia. Faulkner once said that to understand the world, you must first understand a place like Mississippi. From time to time, it's good for me to go back and look at where I grew up and to better understand West Virginia history by first understanding a little bit more about Wetzel County, West Virginia history. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I am the best Virginian. I talk about West Virginia travel and history, sometimes delve into the paranormal, sometimes delve into true crime. But today, because the last two have been pretty popular, I am going to revisit my cemetery tourism series by talking about the Williams Cemetery. I really love exploring these old cemeteries, even if a guy like me walking around a cemetery tends to look a little bit suspicious. And if this type of content interests you or you just like the look and feel of some of these old cemeteries, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because it's something I do from time to time here on the channel. Overlooking the Ohio River in New Martinsville, West Virginia is the William Cemetery, one of the oldest non-family owned cemeteries in all of Wetzel County. And as you walk through the cemetery, you can kind of see how it was laid out over time, how it slowly got occupied over a long period of time. Some of the earliest graves date back to the super early 1800s up until almost modern day as you move from south to north and kind of southeast up to the more northern part of the cemetery. Now, when you start in the southeastern part of the cemetery, uh, this is where some of the oldest markers uh, in the entire cemetery are. And for the most part, they're just basic stone slabs. Um, really pre-industrialization, pre-railroad, uh, all these markers were probably made super locally by locally sourced materials pretty much during this time period. Unless you were some significant fig figure, you were not going to get some type of elaborate monument. The one exception to this is the marker of a Presley in Martin. Uh, it looks much fancier and much newer than the rest of the markers in this area. That is because uh, many regard Presley as the founder of New Martinsville, West Virginia. In 1810, Martin purchased about 80 acres from the widow of one Edward Doolin. Doolin was one of the first white settlers in the area, and after a couple skirmishes with the native inhabitants of the area, they evicted him from the Ohio River Valley. Let me check my notes real quick here. Straight to the afterlife. With this new piece of land, Martin began laying out the area, and he would become the first postman for the area that many just referred to as the mouth of Fish Creek, Virginia. In 1836, when the area became a little more well settled, Martin tried incorporating the town with the government of Virginia as a town called Martinsville. Now, the government of Virginia decided that since there was already a Martinsville, which is now in Virginia, and a Martinsburg, which is now in West Virginia, that this town needed a different name. And there's some conflicting uh, information over whether Martin or the state of Virginia made this decision, but at the end of the day, this town would become known as New Martinsville. Personally, I would have gone back to the original name, uh, Mouth of Fish Creek, but, but Presley wasn't done yet. When Wetzel County split from Tyler County, Virginia, Martin played a major role in establishing the first courthouse in New Martinsville, West Virginia. So as I was walking through the cemetery, as you move from south to north, uh, the monuments tend to get bigger, a little bit more elaborate. And one of them that I found belonged to a Dr. C.L. McIntyre. And it says right below that, 
uh, 7th Regular West Virginia Infantry. You know, I've been to Independence Hall. I've been down to Fort Borman down in Parkersburg. You know, I've seen where West Virginia become a state. I've seen one of the major fortifications that was used during the American Civil War. But oftentimes, you can forget about how big of a role a lot of these smaller communities in between some of those big places played in the conflict. For example, the 7th Regular West Virginia Infantry uh, was made up of about 60% West Virginians, mostly from the Ohio River Valley. In order to bolster the ranks, the other 40% was Ohio and Pennsylvania soldiers. Now, initially, their primary task was they were going to defend the railroad in the Ohio River Valley, again, mostly between Wheeling and Parkersburg. But it was decided at some point that it would be more important for them to track down and arrest the sheriff of Tyler County, West Virginia, who was a very outspoken Southern supporter. This is a very weird little chunk of history. We oftentimes talk about how the Civil War was community versus community, brother versus brother, you know, brother versus father. But here you have a group of soldiers whose first task was to go and arrest a sheriff of a neighboring county. Lastly, it wouldn't be a Wetzel County video without me talking about John C. McEldowney Jr the author of History of Wetzel County, West Virginia. I always end up talking about this guy, and he's considered by many to be the greatest Wetzel County historian so far. And by many, he's regarded as one of the greatest West Virginia historians so far. It's funny because where I had to park the day I went to the William Cemetery, it was like the second or third monument I came across. I, I just saw a great big McEldowney, so I had to pull out my phone and be like, okay, is this the McEldowney? And sure enough, it was. Um, it was a, I believe, a mother, father, and then McEldowney Jr. Uh, buried right there along with them. I've talked about McEldowney a lot here on the channel, and it seems like any time I do a video on Wetzel County, I have to bring him up uh, for better or worse, no matter what I'm talking about Wetzel County related, I always kind of have to cite him as a source. Now, anyone who's interested in Wetzel County history uh, should take a look at his book. It's a very good list of topics. But just be aware, once you start digging into it and reading it, you might want to take everything he says with a good couple tablespoons of salt. For example, his uncle uh, claimed to have pulled a solid gold idol out of a prehistoric burial mound, uh, which was on his property. And if that's something that interests you, I did an entire video on the Ohio River Mound of New Martinsville. Uh, definitely go check it out. I'll put a link to it up here somewhere. Or how uh, after the murder of John Jennings, which I also did a video about, uh, many of the members of the notorious Jennings gang uh, basically fled the state and I believe some went to Ohio and the rest went to the South. Even though Little John Jennings, a.k.a. John Jennings Jr., uh, the son who witnessed the murder of John Jennings, was probably living in Wetzel County when McEldowney wrote this book. Uh, he wouldn't pass away till years later, but he was buried like four miles outside of New Martinsville, and he was definitely alive when this book was written. So that was just a couple of the graves, a couple of the points of interest um, I learned about just in this quick walk through the William Cemetery. Both days I was there, the weather was pretty deplorable. Um, it was just patchy rain. It really hindered me from being able to do a good deep search of the cemetery. Uh, but it did allow me to 
do this video, I did get a lot of great pictures that I will be referencing, trying to get more information about some of the individuals who were buried there and more information about New Martinsville history as a whole because I sincerely believe that the more you can understand about some of these historical cemeteries, the more you can understand about the communities that they are in. With that being said, I know some of you are probably going to ask, but what about the haunted history of the William Cemetery? Uh, if you're familiar with the area, you know it is regarded as one of the most haunted cemeteries in all of New Martinsville. Don't worry, I will be doing a follow-up to this video. I will probably look into the hauntings of the William Cemetery, do a little bit more research on some of the Ruth Ann Music ghost stories of Wetzel County, and throw together a video about all the topics I just mentioned. Anyways, with that being said, if you know any other old historical cemeteries in West Virginia that you would like for me to visit, leave them down in the comments. And until next time, don't forget to stay wild, stay wonderful, and I'll talk to you later.